America. What's up, my fellow collectors? What's going on? How are you? Yes, you see it, right? And you see it in front of you. It's me, your host, HeBot. And this is another episode of Toys in My Closet. Hopefully, you've come by and check it out and give me some love and support. I have two more of the McFarlane Toys Adult Collectible DC Multiverse Deluxe Collect to Build figures from the DC Multiverse new series and line from what well, is presumably wave one right these are the deluxe sets because they come with a collect built uh, Batmobile which is basically uh, the different approach instead of having a builder figure which most people probably and more than likely prefer McFarlane chose to do uh, a different type of thing and a different type of route as he said in an interview with JC from the uh, Toys International, uh, Toy News International. You know, shout outs to him. It was a pretty awesome and you know straight to the point uh, interview with Todd. That he didn't want to feel uh, he didn't want to make the consumer feel forced having to buy big waves of up to six to seven figures and just to build another character that is harder to bring out as a deluxe figure because it's more expensive. Um, with uh, you know having to kind of force feed characters in the wave at least four of the characters in the wave are characters people really didn't care about so he wanted to do it where it was less characters but still give you something to kind of build upon so he figured let me give you vehicles like Batmobiles and even you know I'm pretty sure so presumably he probably can take an approach like creating you know uh, also giving us the ability of building you know, um, bat wings, you know, like bat, like bat wings or bat cycles. And even he, he alluded to the idea of maybe even a backdrop drama, like a computer or in the bat cave or some type of chair or something like that, that Batman uses in gadgets and maybe even other dramas for other characters in the DC universe, or in this case, multiverse. So as you see here, I have Batman, I mean, Nightwing and Batgirl and I have to say so far as what I've seen out of packaging and played with these guys so far these are really really awesome figures really good figures uh, looked really incredible really nice paint application really nice uh, deco because most of their uh, most of the stuff on them is not painted it is painted but it's not painted on it's actual sculpting with painting on the sculpt uh, which makes the figure feel more premium more quality and less of you know um of a cheap or let's say cheap route that they went with like in a lot of cases with the dc multiverse that mattel provided or even you know marvel legends so here's the two packaging i have batgirl here on one side I'll take a closer look real quick over here the window box you see the weapons are still in there or accessories rather and then that's the the build a piece uh, Batmobile, it sells, it sells here. Uh, connect, collect to build, right? And this is what it looks like in the promotional shop Multiverse Batgirl. There, then as you see, we go over here on the top. You see 22 points of moving parts, McFarlane Toys at the top. Obviously, we have you know the Batman Art of Crime Batgirl. This is from that comic book reference. Uh, again, over here you see Batgirl on the side, DC Multiverse. Then you turn it around and we have the, uh, as you call it, collective build there. It says three parts. In the top we have Batgirl right there, Art of Crime. And then this is like a promotional shot of the of the comic which is referencing the material in which this figure has been inspired by as you can see it's really nice with the cool looking shades of blue and then other promotional shots of the other figures included in this deluxe set wave and as you see there got another collective build batman and falling on social media stuff and dc one Bros. So, same thing for, uh, as you see here, same thing for Robin, or 
or rather Nightwing. Same thing, Nightwing, same thing. As you can see, his weapons or his uh, screaming sticks are taken out because I did a little customization or I told my daughter to do a little customization with this, the other piece. Hopefully I'll be able to show you guys, you guys will like that, uh, what I did. Here he is, uh, 24 parts right there again. And uh, again, turn around, Nightwing on the side. Very nice. Nightwing on the top. And as you see here, we have Nightwing from the actual reference and source material that it was inspired from, well, the design. And this is from the comic called Better Than Batman. So we'll put, a, we'll put this right over here. As you can see, everything just fell. It's a disaster. Unbelievable. The stuff you have to go through just to get these things done. Stand him up there. This is Nightwing here. And then stand her right there. For cross-reference. There we go. Boom. There we go. We have him again in all their glory. So, we take it out of what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the packaging and check out each figure individually. What we're going to do is we're going to start with Nightwing. And here you have it. Just like before, the other inserts in the inside, the gut, if you will, of the packaging has really nice artwork of different old school arts. And cover arts of comics from you know other uh, you know eras and things like that like Green Lantern there and it says their world's best comics which is a really nice touch especially for the mint on card collector that likes to have uh, things in packaging to give it a nice look uh, as you're looking at it from the blubber blister bubble blister inside out so these are the accessories he comes with First, of course, we have the there we go. First we have the uh the um actual piece for the Batmobile which looks really nice. As you can see it has a lot of weathering and scrapes on it, like uh of scuff marks of being in battle. So we'll see how that comes together. Then we have his classic and iconic, obviously, Eskrima sticks, as you see there. I took the liberty of asking my daughter to paint them to, for me in blue. She's got to hit it with another pinnacle because I they were just completely black and I don't like the plain look of the black only. Uh, just to kind of give it a little bit more extra pop when he has them in his hands. So those are his screaming sticks. Comes with both. And then he comes with the little display base, which, you know, we all know it's simple and simple. Nothing to write home about, but really nice with the DC logo. It You know, it's a nice added piece, in my opinion. And a lot of people, I think, feel the same. Because if you're having problems with standing figures or space limitations when you pose them in your in your shelf this helps you know with getting them in a position where they won't fall and you know to be honest you know most figures don't even come with a stand so to have the added stand i think it's a nice little touch even though it's very simple and then of course we have these wonderful wonderful looking trading cards like we used to collect back in the day, like baseball Don Ross cards. And there's the picture artwork, really nice, with a high gloss finish. These are very thick, very thick trade cards. It says, see their Nightwing, the title. Same exact art from the back from the other. And then you have the Dick Grayson began his crime fighting career as the original original bat robin so he has the, you know his um his bio so i'll put it there if you guys want to check it out and read it um we just pause it there so yeah that's what he came as far as accessories now let's take a closer look at nightwing himself
Okay, guys, and here we have Robin, obviously, on the turntable, where he's going around and around and around. And let's take a closer look. As you can see, his, his profile and, and anatomy of the figure is pretty nice. It's pretty accurate. Not too overbearing. Really nice shape. You see, uh, you know, basically how Robin would look like or Nightwing in this case, it used to be formerly known as Robin. Uh, you know, because being a gymnast and a uh, circus trapeze coming from that type of family. Uh, he, so he's very athletic. So we'll take a, place, a closer look at, at him really fast and bring him closer to the camera. And as you can see there, he has a very, very, very nice face coat very clean and very nicely painted with the highlights in his hair of blue with the glossy look like if you had it wet or gelled up because you know every superhero has to look good especially somebody like Nightwing that he thinks he's a he's a ladies man he's kind of sexy waxy right like they call him consider him nice touch of the skin tone in touch of like a little semi gloss on the lips in pink to make it look natural with the whited out eyes <clears throat> and of course that nice matte finish on the paint job that makes it look really really nice and of course we have to see how much he measures so let's measure him up really fast I'll do it from here stop this and do it from here as you can see I'll stand him up and he oh boy there we go push back the camera and we'll measure him from top to bottom up as you can see here oh boy here we go from top to bottom going up See, he's measuring at a little over six and a half. So he's almost seven, seven inches in scale, which is about right, because this is a seven inch scale line. So we'll continue on by bringing him up both again. And one of the first things that I really, really love and enjoyed is in details is how his neck is a different it's on a different peg so it moves independently and it has the illusion of him having a suit on and you can see it the way it looks here by having the separated piece of the ball peg and the neck in as a separate piece uh, as opposed to one whole piece it gives that illusion really nicely I think it sells it very well and the matte finish on his suit I think complements it very well as well would you see the the logo there with the symbol of of the Nightwing and it goes all the way around to the back where he has the two clips and these are made out of soft rubber not hard so don't be worried that they might break in time where you can store the Scream of Sticks and then you see in his arms as you can see there you have really nice detail these wraps of braces or, or straps with the buckles uh, again where his uh, anatomy is in the six pack and he has also there on the side like the carbon texture like it's a bodysuit but it's in it's bulletproof obviously same thing on the side and the cut there for the one of the, the joints looks very nicely cut it's not too bad uh, or doesn't feel or look a little weird uh, the way that you know kind of the one the, that Batman has looks like and this is his um, obviously his under area the crotch area which a lot of people say it looks big but to be honest it doesn't really look big in person it probably comes off that way on the camera but in reality in person it really isn't big I think it's just the right size nice detail there 
going all the way around. Buttocks area. See, nice and clean. Because so he's mainly black. Very simplistic, but effective then the inside there. The grooves of his thighs. Same texture with the black, with those same seams cut up, going down by the knee. Then he has the, this part in the boot by the chin and the calf where it's painted like it looks like straps it's part of the costume and then he has the ball the ball peg um, with his uh, actual boots or shoes or you know whatever you want to call them with the teeth and it does have a peg in the bottom so that you can put him in a stand obviously so I think he looks really good. Simple, but really effective. Uh, <clears throat> for me, he looks nicer than all the Nightwings that at least I've seen so far, including DC Essentials. I mean, uh, I have some, but not all. So we'll take a look at that. So for articulation, he, his head goes down that much. And then his head goes up. If you push it back, and put the hair overlapping this color part you can make them look pretty nicely up that much then it goes left and right obviously and it definitely has attitude so you got a nice tilt that way and a nice tilt this way so it's really nice and then the neck is separate from the head really and it feels nice and tight <clears throat> Not like the problem that I had with Johnny Cage that it kept popping out. And as for the shoulders, they go up this much. Around 180 degree. Obviously, the double, double jointed elbows. And you have the, you know, ball peg, which is really tight. You can move it around and then go left and up and down on the wrist. Then it has the butterfly, which moves like so. And you can move it up, down, up, down, or oh, come on, up, down, or in circles, which works pretty good. Same thing on the other side. So, you know, when you pose them, it actually, from this side came out, you see, actually helps you with uh, stretching his arms back and so. Then for the way, for the 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 leg area, they have the split. You can do a full, full on Van Damme split. Okay, like so. The problem is, I keep saying that these pegs that they use, this has to be smaller when this lengthier characters and I think Hellbat being a bigger character <coughs> actually has a smaller one and because it's not so small the the, the swivel on the thigh is kind of tight but it's there it works you see if he didn't if it had a little smaller it would turn and swivel a lot more effective so when you're posing him it's a lot better same thing on this side it's there, but it feels very tight. <coughs> Excuse me, because of that. <coughs> then, <coughs> obviously, he has a waist swivel, and then he has the torso area, which goes back and forth, goes back like that, that much, and goes forward that one. Then he has a crunch in the actual whole wrist waist area it goes up goes down that much and then he can hyperextend back quite a bit that much then double double on the knee obviously as you can see and then obviously on the ball peg you can go forward that much back that much left and right and then it has the nice rockers plus the toe hinges as you can see which are pretty tight actually too 
on this um, Nightwing figure. So that's for his articulation. That's uh, what we have. So really, really nice. So let's get his accessories on real quick and see what they look like, and you know, make some comparisons. So this is what he looks like with the screamer streaks on the back. You know, being uh, host on the holster, obviously and him on the stand looking really nice the matte finish to the black really makes this figure pop so we're gonna put it on his hands now on his side i'll put that one here like so on this side and then put this one on this side really fast it's very tight Get them here like so. And there he look here's what he looks like with them on. Looking pretty dope. Pretty hot to trot. I think he looks really cool. I think he looks really cool. So now let's just move in and do some comparisons with some other Nightwing figures. So here we go. I have him next to the uh, recent DC Universe, or um, I think it was Multiverse 2. I build the figure from the uh, Samurai uh, Batman from the animated movie. <coughs> and then I have the Icons, uh, the Icons Nightwing from, you know, that is a little bit scalar down, obviously. It's a lot much smaller, but you guys can see there the differences of how he looks. Next to each other. And like I said, I think this figure is superior to any of the Dark Knight Wings. <clears throat> <clears throat> that we have available right now from any other previous re release from any other line. Uh, the McFarlane one I think is far superior, even though a lot of people, uh, you know, may have gripes with it because it's McFarlane and they haven't even actually gotten their hands on the figure. I think he's well worth it and he's going to be a nice uh, replacement piece on your shelf. Uh, especially in the 7 inch scale, I know he doesn't really fit, but neither one of us are in, these are in scale. The multiverse one wasn't, and neither was the icons. Uh, you know, they're you know, six inch, this is about five and a quarter, maybe five, and then obviously the new one from McFarlane is in the seven inch, uh, you know, realm. So now let's take a closer look at Batgirl. And here we have Batgirl standing alongside. Her accessories obviously on the turntable and like you said like I said before just for reference I try to show you guys the insert again from the inside has you know uh, same thing comic book design stuff like that for a nice extra little touch uh, and 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 uh, you know pleasing to the eye especially in packaging I think it's really nice touch so we'll start off with her her, her accessories that she comes with and she brings the collect to build Batmobile and it's this side here again with the tires and the tires are made out of rubber and you see they have threads with looks to be bat symbols and then there's bat symbols there on the actual tire as well as you 
you can see nicely black and weathered metal on it like you know like I said scuff marks from battle and you know in the road so that's this is pretty cool then we'll move on and she comes with this awesome looking batarang kind of big because she is smaller and more lanky looking so I wouldn't I can understand why it looks kind of big but as you saw like with the Batman uh, it's the same size it's not any bigger than other batarangs other than it might be a tad thicker uh, which I think is just for safety purposes for the fact that they sell this in the toy aisle uh, even though it's main for it's mainly made for uh, collectors that are adults but you know kids do tend to cling on to things that adults like as well the gold paint on is really nice so we have that then of course she comes with the little battering gun and a nice gun metal silver as you see with the rope looking ex exaggeratedly big coming out of it you know <laughs> with the end of the hook in gun metal silver too as well uh, and I think again the thickness is for the illusion uh, that you know that for kids that you know they won't try to play around yank it out break it and choke on it possibly or presumably or with the possibility uh, it looks really cool it looks really nice I think it works really really well I think it's cool I don't mind it that it's too thick uh, or it looks really thick uh, when you look at it but in person it's not as bad it's more it looks worse in camera trust me I'm not telling you they didn't in camera everything looks 10% bigger or even 15% uh, <clears throat> then take that to consideration then we have the card with the cross sale of the comic Batgirl the art of crime again her bio there by day Barbara Gordon is a bookish daughter of Gotham City's police commissioner Jim Gordon by night Barbara dons a cape and Kyle as Batgirl. You guys could read the rest. Just give you an idea of what it is. The reference looks pretty nice. Awesome trading card. Looks really pretty. Then the base, very simple. DC symbol there. Nice and round with a matte finish. Again, just in case uh, you have problems with any joints, ankles are on a shelf to make more space. To pose them more closer in a stand always goes a long way so it's a nice touch even though you know even though uh, a lot of people don't even use it but I think it's a nice touch so now let's take a closer look at the figure of bad girl and here we have bad girl on the turntable of course in all of her glory, as you can see, she looks really, really nice. You can see that she has a nice gray in person, I guarantee you, and I promise you, it looks a lot lighter than what you see here on camera. It's a really soft, really beautiful looking gray, complemented really well with that yellow and the accents of the gloves, her, her boots, her harnessed in the front that crosses and becomes that is her, her, that's supposed to be not supposed to be that is her bat symbol that also goes into the back and becomes her backpack plus her utility belt on the waist it looks really nice and this back girl is a really nice design really different from what we've seen before and it's she's really really more in person impressive in person and that is the face that she has um, obviously at first glance it kind of looks like oh maybe she's uh, the animated bad girl but it really isn't based off the reference of the comic that she's in her hair is painted really nice with a brownish reddish with the little bat ears popping out the bat mask really open with the eyes nice burgundy lips lipstick 
and then the cow that goes down her neck that bit withers down billows down into her uh, nicely sculpted um, cape which is short as well which is fitting for her uh, and, and I know a lot of people don't like the cape being in one set um, what you call it in what set pre-pose but to be honest I, I don't mind it looks cool like if you have it uh, actual nice um, material cape then it always stays down all the time no matter how you pose or so it's gonna still look kind of in, in like stagnant in one in one in one form or one uh, direction even when it's a cloth cake now if it's wired you can work with it but obviously the cost would be a lot more and way and you know way more uh, costly obviously um so here's the bat symbol i love the fact that it's all sculpted again it's not just painted it's painted on top of the scope but it's it's an actual scope let's get this as you can see it turns into her backpack on the arms you see it's the bat symbol as well the actual claw and spikes on this side. A nice yellow. Same thing on this side. Then her utility belt. You can see it's supposed to be the shape of a bat as well with the nice pouches on the side and, and the little symbols that look like the wings coming out on both her hips. And then in the back, as you can see, really nice buttock shape. Even the seams going up, as you can see, go up here looks like a bat and then her backpack the harness is part of her symbol missing a little bit of paint there then she has also the, the texture lines you know everywhere so you can feel like it's a high-tech suit that's all here in her breast area bosom area which looks really nicely sculpted. Simple but effective. Then the boots obviously looks like the bat going down with some wonderful boots uh, tips on the bottom with spikes of bats, you know, uh, wings coming out of the back, which makes it look really modern and futuristic. Uh, so, you know, that her presentation is really, really nice. So for her articulation, her head does go left and right and then it goes her head goes down this much which is really really good but then because of this part of the hair even though it's very soft as you can see she, her head does go up if the hair wouldn't intrude it would be it would go up at least that much from holding it but just to give you guys the idea so then it does have a tilt on both sides and again the hair here on the side of her kind of impose and makes it a little bit trickier but it is on a nice ball joint and very nicely tight that's it you see you can get it in certain angles to stay then she has the butterfly there on the shoulder as well she goes up down as you can see her arms go up this high and then they go the 180 degrees and then she has a double double elbow as you can see really nice which is better than a lot of Marvel Legend female characters she has the swivel on the top on the bicep and then obviously in the hand the ball peg which goes up down and then you know rotates and then she has the cut here again another nice cut um, where it doesn't look too ab too abnormal or, or unnatural it comes down and and with the anatomy bone there muscle rather on her stomach the torso so the top torso this cut will, it goes 
forward this much and then back that much so it has that nice movement and there's a ball then she has a she has a waist swivel even though it's tight and then she can crunch forward obviously with the waist and the combination of the torso down she can look down that much and then back to hyperextend she goes a lot just that much so it's really well a range of movement very good range of movement then over here obviously again so you can do the Van Damme split full split with no problems better than most Marvel Legends almost all the pegs are a little smaller so you do have the freedom of the rotation and the hips As you can see it's a lot smoother for movement of the legs for posability and do the dynamic pose it really goes a long way and at the same time it doesn't really break the sculpting so it doesn't look like the sculpting got messed up and it looks weird or anything like that so her legs they go up that much straight they probably go up a little higher then back they go back that much you got the double double on the knee and then you got the peg on the boot it goes up that much back that much toe hinge left and right and then it has the uh, insane rockers that actually work really well and her joints are again they're very her joints are very like like I said to you guys before they feel a lot like the way storm collectible feels the rubber feels like a nice softer material but still quality uh, with a lot of density that doesn't feel like it's gonna get ruined with time with the paint as well or scuffing um, they feel smooth the joints but also kind of hard at the same time like like not too loose uh, it's hard to explain but if you guys mess with storm collectible figures you know what it, what I'm talking about uh, it feels quality you can tell uh, and she looks really good um, so that is her articulation so what we'll do is we will put her on here and now we will put the accessories on her and see what she looks like with the accessories and here we are back girl and I have a kind of like in a little bit of kind of a you know pose dynamic pose she's uh, about to shoot up while holding the battery in her hands looking downwards to maybe throw it at an, a villain you know the stand again works really well because you can leave her in that position and she won't keel over and her joints are strong enough to hold up the weight which looks really really great as you can see really really cool turn around you see boom, 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 that I have her the stand is doing its job as you can see and she looks pretty dope so that's what she looks like with the accessories and I think they're simple but I think it's enough there to give you playability and posability value so let's check out some comparisons with other pack girls that I have and here she is alongside some of my pack girls that I have and as you can see I have the DC Essentials Batgirl, which I really, really enjoy. That's one of the stronger DC Essential releases, especially with the pegs and everything that in the bottom, they work really well because they went a different direction. Instead of pegs, they did a different direction with the feet. But I love the purple, even though it looks kind of bluish here, bluish gray is purple. And her face is uh, one of the nicest looking faces, um, to be honest. Uh, just show you guys real quick see I think she looks great 
And then obviously you have the DC icons right there, which again, she also has a really nice face, but also really nice face. But the problem is that again, they were too small. And then we got this very older and dated DC Multiverse alternate black costume bat, bat girl, as you can see there. Here is her her costume, which I haven't displaced them because she doesn't stand for anything. Like her weight. The way they were designed it for some reason, I don't know why. She just does not stand, so I have to have her on the stand. Let's look at her face as well. It's not terrible. It's not terrible. It just looks dated, that's all. Um, especially with the articulation and the smaller amounts of um, density in the plastic. It's very skinny. You can see here is a black and blue with the yellow motif so they all look kind of different with the exception of the icon and the dc essentials is just that purple costume that she uses so she uses quite a few different colors there's also the one that she has like the classic batman colors as well with the gray and the blue like the classic blade group play gray and blue batman as you can see how much trouble i'm having just standing her there uh, side by side. So those are the, uh, you know, bad girls I have. So now let's just take a group, a group shot and see how they look all together. And here is what we would call the money shot. So far, the, the, the four McFarlane toys, DC Multiverse figures that I have, that are supposed to be more uh, in the same style and line, like you know, aesthetic-wise, and and obviously um, with that more realistic look and comic realistic look. We have you know the Superman, which I think looks fantastic, the Nightwing, Batgirl, and obviously Batman. Uh, I think they look incredible, and they're gonna look better and better. All together in the toy shelves. Now I do want to get the Batman who laughs and consider him as a villain, but you know I don't know if I'm going to get my hands on it anytime close or soon. So real quick, what I'll do is let me pull the camera back really fast and let me put these two pieces together right in front of you guys, just so you guys can see. And here are the two building connect. Building Connect, yeah. So there it is, right there. So far, and this has a nice, it's a nice size, to be honest. It's a nice size. I think when they're all built uh, and put together, you have a couple of these. It's going to look really, really nice. I think uh, it's good that he's taking a chance and doing something different. I think it's cool, even though many probably won't appreciate it. So now let's do one more shot uh, to end the review and the look, overlook, unboxing of these two. Uh, give me one sec. And here you go, guys. Here we have the money shot. The money shot. These are all the figures that I have so far in DC with, yeah, obviously, in the same scale of the 7-inch uh, line. Um, you know, we got the Red Hood from DC Essentials, the Wonder Woman from DC Essentials, Supergirl from C DC Essentials, Superman from DC Essentials, Cyborg Superman from DC Essentials, Bad Girl from DC Essentials, Cheetah from DC Essentials. So, hopefully McFarlane will make his own interpretation of these characters as well. But until then, you can definitely mix and match them together. Because they go well and they look really nice all together as you can see uh, so you know there's my review and boxing and overlook of the McFarlane toys DC Multiverse Nightwing and Batgirl 
I think they're phenomenal figures. I think they're really, really good. A lot better than what uh, I was expecting. And I think that's going to be the same thought and sentiment for most of you out there that pick them up uh, and add them to your collection. I think they were well worth it. And I think they're going to look nice uh, on your shelf. Once you get them in hand, you're going to be pleasantly surprised and uh, really happy with them. So check them out, guys. You can find them in Amazon, Walmart, and even in Target. This in their online stores. Uh, and in some stores, in stores themselves, uh, they I really keep mainly seeing Batman, Harley Quinn, and and uh, things like uh, Green Lantern animated and Green Superman animated and Batman animated. I really haven't seen the Built to Collect uh, wave uh, like the Batman Who Laughs as well. Uh, I had to order it from Amazon, so hopefully you guys uh, will get luckier than I do. But if you don't check out Amazon, they had a good price that are almost at the same retail price with some some cases free shipping, some cases you know four dollars shipping, which is really not too bad with the convenience of them dropping it off right in your home and you not having to go out and spend gas and your time on the toy hunt, even though the toy hunts are fun. So guys, let me know what you think down below in the comments. Let me know if you guys like the key figures or after you saw this review. I helped you out and gave you enough information to make you want to go out and pick them up and purchase them. Uh, I hope I was informative and fair. And, uh, you know, as always, like I said, leave me a thumbs up for a like, leave me a thumbs down for a dislike, and let me know what you think of your own personal opinion of the figures themselves. Uh, because everybody's thought process is different and everybody's feelings are different. So it's always nice to compare and contrast. And as always, if you're new to my channel, welcome. And if you didn't subscribe, hey, please feel free and subscribe because if you do, it goes a long way and helps me out a very big way to grow my channel and expand it and make it better, uh, you know, day after day. And also, when you do, remember, I know you guys don't have to, so it means the world to me and I appreciate it very much. But I just to let you guys know, if you do, I consider you part of my family so you guys like I said always thank you for stopping by and share it with someone you think might like it and if you ever guys want to help me in any way shape or form to further my channel with more content like this like figures and video games and lighting and quality or backdrops and all types of cool stuff to make the process look better and the presentation look more professional and more enticing uh, it's down in the description below with from my patreon to my Instagram page to my PayPal account uh, Only if you guys want to from the kindness of your heart nothing here is obligated You guys know that very well either way. I love you guys and the support you give me so until the next one See you soon uh, with another towards in my closet and some awesome new figures down the pipe. See you on the next one guys. Bye. Bye